Hi everyone! I understand it's afternoon. I assume it's been a long day. So, for me it's always one of the nice questions, what I can share valuable for you. Because for me, I assume a lot of this I already know. That's why I'm here. I'll stick with some notes, so get focused. I assume you will forgive me this. Uh, definition I assume everybody knows, so let's not waste time on this. What we are talking today about here, it was written in the description. Or should we make a little pause? Okay. Uh, does anyone are not familiar with those, or I assume we already everyone here know? Fine. <laughs> Again, let's not waste time, but those are some of the basics we need to cover. First of all, what I got and from where I got it. So, shouldn't it be just on my assumptions or ideas or approaches how it could be done? Uh, information comes from the observation. Actually, one of our associates, partners, are building science research based on this area, and we are helping for him with this research. So, he agreed to share with me his information. Uh, there's a lot of uh, confidential data I can't share now, maybe some later point, but that's from where it comes. And it's for approximately two past years, and commercial and state organizations were involved, actually still involved, because it's an ongoing process. It's not like a completed, like Riga never will be completed, so again, improvements and implementations in many cases are forever. Now, Theoretically, all seemed for organizations quite simple, and actually for the person involved there with them also. Looked like, what could be harder? Let's just stick with the main things we have to do. Uh, theoretically, first, we see what are organizations' risk management, where stands cybersecurity and all related stuff, what should be approached, how valuable it is for the organization. Fine. Next, when we know what is in our focus now, we need to plan activities in accordance, make an estimation, and finally, reach agreement with management. It's fine, we can, in this budget, get those results. Sounded too simple, and it wasn't. For nobody, actually, it was simple. <sighs> what common situations had arisen? In a lot of cases, First step broke everything. No valuable risk management in organization. Some approach, some ideas, some priorities, maybe a vision, but no risk management plan. It means you can't say uh, how valuable it is for the organization or for the business itself. In that case, if we can't say how valuable it is, then how much it's valuable to be spent there? Business card answers that, and that holds large risk, and I'll talk a bit, a bit later also. Now, even if there are a structure and approach, and even implemented a uh, part for covering this area of the cybersecurity, again, it's not in connection with the risks. It's separated. Why? In many cases, somebody just decided. We came across buzzword. Now it's important. We all know how it is. Why? I don't know. But still we need it for a year, maybe for two. But actually, there's no coverage in area what we're going to do with the results. What we are trying to achieve. Yes, we achieved, like a checkbox, achievement. And so what? In that case, we again get into many troubles. Again, I'll get some conclusion about it. Uh, no previous experience, quite fine, because in many cases there are no staff on board, employees already holding knowledge in this area. They're just not familiar with it, and everything unfamiliar holds a bit like thread for us. We are afraid of it, and we'll most probably will not acknowledge it. Why? Because we are afraid to acknowledge our weaknesses. We feel even more weak in this area. That's a problem, but not deadly. <sighs> and this disconnection be uh, between activity planning and budget management, also quite surprising even for me, I assume that maybe 
first three parts would be a problem, but not last, fourth. But again, disconnection. What it holds in there? Quite simple situation. At the moment when you need to discuss your questions, to start running with the project, to find new employees, to find a partner, management is too busy for this. They can't make a decision, they postpone, they need more information, nothing goes on. You struggle, you fight, you try, but somehow it's very slow. If you just ask, is it important for us? Yes. Why? Uh, because quite simple, saying no, it means I'm an idiot. I made one wrong decision starting it all, and now I'm saying we wasted already how much? Because of me. It's important, yes. And actually, everybody knows it's important. Why? We don't know it's important. So how to become a different and say, no, 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 in our organization, this area is not important. Some items, yes. Overall, no. Our business are not under this. Wait a minute. I need to be quite familiar with the situation of it. Next thing is, sorry, guys, technical part and other world. I assume a lot of us here are from technical part, right? Right. How well business could understand our <coughs> arguments, criteria, what is needed? In many cases, they can't understand it at all. For them, it's like a hogwash, what you're talking about. What it is. You say it's important. Okay, I even trust you. It's important. Uh, but what's for me in it? I don't see it. And this disconnection kills it. Because if you say, uh, Will you go to the doctor or you'll die? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> you make me afraid. You made me. Or sh you should visit a doctor to check these different things that may influence you at some point. Get off. <laughs> I'll go home. I play golf I and mean, do something good stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. Actually, I just thought I'm ready to die. What? I'll go to the doctor. So we don't have a common language, and that's a problem, large problem. Not only in this area, actually all IT world are a bit sick with this. With this gap between understanding and things what should be done. Really should be, I don't mean like selling something and important and valuable, let's just get some money, no. Really delivering and getting them engaged. They need to understand us. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Still, does it hopeful? I assume not. Oh, sorry, let's get. What still worked out, even with all those problems? That's an interesting part. First, the best succeeded organizations are able to focus on risks. It means not like straight ahead to the cybersecurity questions, but now let's quickly gather a list of our risks, prioritize it and understand where and what stands. In that case, I am afraid and I am choosing what is the most important things for me and I'll stand for it to get those covered. And now we have covered the situations that management will not back off at some moment that it's low priority and later I'll cut the budget. No, it works out. You don't need fully covered great uh, risk management. You can do it quickly like on a paper even. Even that works out. Just have a vision. Helps. Many approaches, whatever works for them. Different approach. Actually, nobody did it uh, the same way. <laughs> Everybody approached it differently, but best was if they looked over it, checked it, and made a kind of simple focused list to update and follow it up. Simplify planning. In many cases, for many projects, what you do, you start gathering. Now we need a team. Now we need our responsibilities, then we'll check this, we'll check that out, we need more information, and time goes on and on, and actually nothing happens because we don't know what we are trying to do. Best works, let's simplify like small cycles, quickly, do. For the state organizations, almost impossible. There's a lot of reasons why, but it was more hard for them like than for commercial organizations. Those worked out much better. Realistic, I assume, situation in Latvia. I don't know how in different countries. In Latvia, unfortunately, yes. And we'll about planning talk even more a bit. 
And, as I already told, this frequency of implementation cycles to quickly adjust. Why? If we don't have previous experience, if we don't have proper planning in place, how to get moving, how to get some results quickly. Still, I could mention an agile methodology is the main thing. Each sprint should deliver business value. Same here. Each next step should deliver business value. Now we know the risks. Now we know how much will cost. Now we know exact steps what could we do. We could adjust. We could change our mind. But we see the progress. And in that case, they keep moving. If they lose this feeling of the results they are getting, uh, they even can back off from the whole process. Why? More prioritized items on the way. They don't have time for such an important things. And what I am talking about is like a scales where business threats and gains in one hand and in other hand is solution and expenses and agreement between it. It's an agreement and this agreement was made for some of the organizations and again it made the best approach. Why are the things quite simple? You can just remind the management, you see, I need to talk about, uh, with you about not cyber security. I need to talk about your risk for losing two millions in upcoming three years. How, probab how is probability they will want to talk with you at that moment, not postpone this? If even you can argue, you remember you told me why you could really lose those two millions. You told me, not I. And they stay with you on the same page. Much better. Much better, their arguments, and they are ready to move on. In some cases, it's not enough. They want more detail. What it means, it will cost me 100,000. It's a lot of money. You're saying, give me 100,000 euros, and maybe you will cover this risk. It's a lot of money for me today. But how much I am about to lose if I will not give you this? That's the deal. the most simplified sample of making this deal. Details could be added in many levels. Actually, there was used quite often Google Sheet or Excel. It's of the simplification because you can decompose it at any level you prefer. And again, no two the same Excels or Sheets. Everybody used it a bit different way. Uh, some tried to use Microsoft Project as example, some, something else. Uh, in many cases, they stuck because they can't get on. It becomes too complicated. Involved persons can't follow up the problem. Simple part is what you as a business risk losing. What is this risk in <coughs> focus of money? And how much would cost for you to have it covered? Uh, yes, it's not one day step and you could approach it differently. Organizations actually did it very different ways. You can start from one side like identifying risks together with your IT part or consultants to see what are real risks, what are probabilities and what are assumption of the losses. In many cases, people are not ready to tell you exact amount. Uh, they feel confused, they don't know. In Like, okay, I will lose a face. I will damage my brand name. How much it will cost me? Actually, I don't know. One step like backing off from them, not like saying, no, you need to give this amount, otherwise no talking, that's it, we're done. You can back off, and in some cases it's, it was done like, okay, you don't give a real amount, give your emotional amount, how much you will value it personally. It shouldn't be covered by any financial data. It's fine. It's not, but it's fine for now. What it gives you, now you have a list with amounts. And what business know how to do is how to compare amounts. How much I gonna lose, or how much I gonna lose, or how much I gonna lose. That's what they can do. Not like, okay, it will be bad, how bad? Okay, how bad it feels for you. There's one small, tiny, <coughs> unfair approach, but works again fine, but uh, nobody actually confirmed it, but that's fine. You see, we are all people. Management also are people, just live. 
And they have their own goals, not only organizational goals, like I'm afraid to lose my career. And the second point makes risk for me much larger. I'll be responsible for the consequences. A first one, okay, it will be, comp it will be company's problem, not mine. I will not be blamed for that. What I'll do, I'll do whatever it takes to make second one the first one. Why? I'm a live person, sorry. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, the, nobody will say, yes, I'm so bad, I'll do this. No. But actually, they act this way. So, if you feel this approach, uh, it worked better if person interviewing, helping, consulting, like backing off and say, okay, give your emotional evaluation. What would be the losses? Fine with them. What is important still anyway, the second one will be done, not the first one, if they had to choose. Why? They'll do anything, so be it this way, or even cancel all discussion with you and get another consultant involved who will support them. They need a personal support, and it works out. Doesn't sound so nice, I assume, but such is the life. <sighs> Quick approach. I assume also most of you are quite familiar with the PDCA approach. Plan, do, check, act, and do it again, and again, and again. Uh, what it covers? <laughs> quite simple. If organization doesn't know how to act, doesn't have previous experience, and are not ready to rely on consultant on the side, yes, in Latvia it's common because we don't trust each other, uh, in different countries is different, but not in Latvia. We don't trust partners. We don't trust for a long time till we get the confirmation that it's worth to trust. But mainly we find why still not to trust. So, okay, make plan. Get this in accordance with the budget. Put it in action. Check and build next plan. One of organizations tried to do in a three months. Uh, <coughs> I can share it, they failed. The shortest cycle so far worked out were six months. And it's best to be related with financial cycle because you need financial adjustments. It's what worked out better. Uh, most common period is a year, but for the beginners it's no good because you will act like a dinosaur, slowly. It takes long time, many things changes, it's bad. So keeping short cycles related to financial, so they learned, they're still on the way, and as uh, approximately half of them understand now, they are on the way forever. They'll be adjusting, learning what happens, implementing it, and reacting to the situation, how it changes. Also, how business changes. Nobody said that it will be important forever. It will change. So, what worked out? This easiness and quickness to approach. So, not trying to gather information, a lot of they don't know, to learn, to get some courses, and so on and so forth. Because actually, to get a knowledge requires time, I assume all of us know it. You need to learn, you get first-hand experience, now you know how it happens. Just on a paper, it's not so good. So, how much they are ready to make a leap of faith. Try it out. Focused, small scale. If it starts working out, scale up. Involve other parts, other businesses, other processes, other departments. Quickness. Uh, it's hard, actually. In many cases, it's like definition. No, we need all this right away. It's hard. I don't say that it will not work out. It could, but it's harder. In some cases, uh, unfortunate organizations got stuck. So just need to restart from scratch because we tried, it didn't work out, so what we can do? You can't adjust, actually, you messed up almost everything. All the cycle, it can't be fixed, <laughs> it should be just removed, let's do that again, let's start from the risks, priorities, and let's see where we can get, because you all messed it up. In case I can see if uh, even a two months period, you see how much identified risks changed too much. It means first list was not actual and why should I tr trust the new one? And actually everything was planned in accordance with the first list. Sorry. Uh, this, again, quickness, 
ability to learn and adjust. Uh, one of the additional risks holding here is like first cycle succeeded, we are the winners. That's not all. We need still to work. We need start to take time and effort. Oh, we are busy. We, we are late on our projects. We are late on other things. Sorry, guys. It's not forever, but it's for a long time. Just learn, reserve time, go forward. One of the things not directly related, but quite helpful, if organization could focus on areas where they're spending a lot of time and resources and automatize, simplify, change to free resources. Not just like put a new burden, like now we need to do also this, but how we can do something to save time later, to not give it up, but hold for ourselves and do uh, new things. Not easy, because always it's like, yes, we got us from our back. Let's relax and do other stuff waiting for us for a long time. Okay, it will be waiting for a long time forever anyway, if I'll pay attention. There's a reason why it's there. So paying attention what and how is done. And one of the most valuable, this was this focus on imaginement and organization needs. Main things that worked out. Because if management are stressed about, about something, they are ready to get involved. They are ready to help and they will most probably not cut the budget. Most likely not. Uh, what it again gives you, it's overall flexibility. Because if this approach used this way, as they have done, one of the organizations already switched to their project methodology they are using. It works out for them fine. They don't have to use this exact situation. Uh, you could switch to any technology, you could quickly adapt new approach, you could quickly learn and decide how you're going to manage specific risks arising now that would be for your business. Like, I'm starting a new business, I'm starting a new business line. It will work differently. What are I going to do about the risks? It's quickly to adapt, it's not like now we need to decide, we need to change the structure and so on and so forth. Yes, the session was not about the tools. The session was about really organization experiences, what they experienced, and the main problems they got stuck, and those problems could be solved. As I mentioned before, let's get a bit back. Common situations that could block the decisions. So how to overcome, how to decide what should be done. It's not first level at the technical side. First, it's at the business side. What's valuable for them? Otherwise, actually, I'm sorry to tell, but in many cases, we are just earning money instead of helping clients succeed. And the main thing for long-term relationship is helping clients succeed. It means finding out with, together with them what is most valuable so they could rely to us. It works the best. I assume that's it. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Andris. Uh, You're welcome. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since I believe nobody has a question, <laughs> I have one for you. Uh, since uh, you provided a very great insight on actually how to talk with the uh, management. So, but here's uh, my issue. In some cases, it's, it's uh, way too hard for even the uh, most experienced IT manager, uh, expert, to evaluate possible, possible business losses yes. in actual money. Yeah. I mean, uh, how much would cost this or that risk uh, in case of a breach versus uh, potential preventive solution? Because uh, there are too many variables, you know? Yes. So uh, could you suggest how to fix this, this gap between IT and management? Oh, yes. I already mentioned the approach. And actually, it quite widely used in sales. This experience is also very valuable, I would say, because they earn money on this. It's step back. Give them ability to say, we can't. 
accept it. Yes, fine. That's fine for today. Actually, maybe for a long time. But please, make your emotional evaluation, but not for the breach. Breach itself will cost you nothing. What will be the consequences? And now you can evaluate what, how you deal with the consequences how it hurts you, how much. And then I could give you a quite simple example. Now, you see, will happen this and this, because we've done nothing with it. Now, this and this, these are consequences. Which one hurts you more? That's the main thing to have. Actually, you could even just number them by prioritizing one, two, three, four, but it will not help how large is the difference. That's the one thing. And the next thing, because uh, those years are quite important, if you give a scope ahead for the three years, well, uh, probability of the risk becomes quite larger. That's one of the things. And again, to evaluate, it's more easy, like say, it's. I see it could be this way, this much, and then I'll come with the next question. Now, if the losses could be this large, how much investment is okay with you? Because now you can put on a one scale possible expenses, on another scale possible losses. Now you can decide. I will not decide. I will try to help you to decide. And maybe I will re-ask, if you still can't, because you said three million still it costs 10,000, if you still can't decide that 10,000 is worth it, I'll ask, really, three million? Because for me it sounds like it's not this way. Maybe it's not so valuable. Maybe it's less. I'll be with you, I go with you together, so uh, you start believing in it. Yes? Uh, but 10,000 is right now, but yes. it's maybe in the future. Yes. That's why I'm asking you to decide. I'm not making mathematical decision just so much, quite obvious. You should do it. No. It will to help you with your feeling. Because there are the cases, unfortunate cases for me, uh, in different areas, not from the science research, but with the company also, they focused on possible breaches, but actually they had a different problems, much larger problems, not related to the cybersecurity, threatening overall business. If those risks not to be handled, there will be no cybersecurity risks, there will be no organization, they will die, just bankrupt. And that's it. That's why the main risk plan is so important. And again, why it's valuability with the money is more easy for them to understand. And again, if they jump off, they decided, yes, let's go with this 10,000. You say, we need to discuss this uh, technical item. What? I have a meeting. It's very important. If I tell you we need to discuss something to cover your risk to lose 3 million, it's easier. Even it has been given as an emotional amount. It helps. Yes, it's psychology. Yes, but it works. Okay, we have <laughs> one more. Uh, I have a question. Uh, let's say you have a client and you, you have a very uh, effective and, and, and positive project. You build uh, the solution, which is, let's say, state of the art. Mm. Everything you wanted, you, you did. You get the budget, you, did the, you, you have the hardware and all the solutions running. My question is, let's say, all this, all this stuff is running, but suddenly the breach happens, yes, and and, and the ship goes down. Uh, what do you mainly say cl uh, to client after this happens? What is your main message in this in this position? Because it's, it's very nice to, to sell some some uh, solution which runs forever, and none none of the none of the breaches happen, and, and you you don't e even know the surface of the ac actual problems because always everything is running fine. But then something happens, and, and we, ha we have a we have a I don't know breakdown and, yes. and deny of, of service and every, everything. What happens. Is the, what 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 do you mainly do in the, in these cases? Uh, multiple answers would be in place, and uh, it would be for me to nice here. Does it cover the question? First of all, in the long term experience, I became to start. Uh, paying a lot of attention for the client to understand that we are not removing risk. We are just helping to lower possibility. And again, getting from them in any way good with me, so they tell me that they understand that it's not like removing the risk. They know that they invest only 
to lower the possibility. Uh, I know that in many cases it has been bypassed and nobody did it. Yes, it happens. Also, clients at the moment of the struggle uh, uh, tend to forget such things because we are now and here and we are in deep, <coughs> not water. And uh, I'd like someone to blame, <laughs> actually. First of all, acknowledge. Because they have everything to blame you, even approved. You can't step out and say, I'm white, it's not me, it's her. That's, that's no, first, fail. If you fail, most cases clients are prepared to fight you to the death, to get you acknowledged. And in the first step you just said yes. So all the effort put here, they're just losing balance there. And now you have the time. Next thing mostly works out, not in all cases. I'm ready to help and to be with you. What we can do, because actually less important, I assume, for you is who to blame, but how we could solve the situation, the crisis. And I'm here, I'll change the plans, I'll adjust. Yes, I can't do everything. I can't just make it not happen, because it was. Uh, yes, I'm here for you. In most cases, uh, taking by surprise. <laughs> they are not ready for me first to just right away acknowledge, yes, yes. And next one, right away, not waiting at all, what we can do together to get out of it. Maybe we even need to hire you also to get help from outside. Okay, <clears throat> in some limits of the budget, I assume. <laughs> but still, mostly works because client feels that you know first. Distancing, not my problem. Money, fine, now you're in deep um, bad situations, that's your problem. Uh, yes, you can do it. Many companies do it this way. Like, there will be next client, bye-bye. No problem. Latvia is small. You could quickly run out of the clients, and bad word also could damage. Uh, ability to lose and confidently, calmly say, yes, yes, we acknowledge, but don't say, I am to blame. Yes, we covered, and yes, it still failed. Don't let, because otherwise you'll get next long line of meetings and possible situations, now what are we going to do with you? Also the risk and uh, also maybe we could beat some money out of you as a compensation because you to blame and you to blame also for um, bad potatoes, for my bad breakfast, for my bad mood and for everything. Uh, not good. Acknowledge, yes, ready to help. In some cases clients are not ready for discussion at all, completely, out of bounds. Happens. Rarely, very rarely, but uh, I have on my own experience. Let me check it out. So don't approximate. Yes, uh, two cases, complete disaster. It was hard to cover. It was about to taking the thing to the court because everything will be dead and so. So yes, it was hard approach. No discussion, no ability to talk. Yes, still solved without any such issues and also with direct financial. Yes, we put an effort, we put an expenses on this to cover and to help recover. Yes, it was one of the cases was ours to blame, just people were too ex exhausted and made the mistakes, unfortunately. We learned from it and client actually at the end, when we just when this hardest way, uh, they still was with us because we acknowledged, yes, it was hard, we covered, we helped as much as we could, and they acknowledged that, okay, fine, but what other will be different than you? You at least didn't abandon, didn't fight us, you was ready for the discussion and really actually doing something. Did it answer your question? <laughs>